All right, so we said it's one thing to identify the risk at the assertion level. Now, as auditors, we have to go and assess that risk at the assertion level. And the first element of that risk of material misstatement is inherent risk. So we've got to assess the inherent risk irrespective of controls. And how do we do that? We have to consider if we believe this risk is susceptible to a misstatement for the assertion. And how do we see that? We look at a few factors. One, the complexity. Is there a complex calculation? Is there complexity in recording this balance or transaction? Is there subjectivity? Is there judgment in determining the value for this balance or class of transaction? Is it susceptible to fraud? Has there been a change in the way they record this or a change in the accounting treatment? Is there any uncertainty around how this balance or class of transaction should be determined? And guys, those five factors give the degree to susceptibility of misstatements. Then we have to also consider was there a risk of material misstatement at the financial statement level that could affect this specific class of transaction or account balance? So I've got to go one step backwards and say Okay, I've got this risk here for this balance or transaction. Was there anything else at the financial statement level that added to a risk for this balance or transaction? So it's a massive assessment that the standard now requires us to do when considering the inherent risk at the assertion level. But guys, if there's no complexity in determining this amount and there's no subjectivity, it's literally, this is how IFRS says you determine repairs and maintenance, then the inherent risk is low when it comes to the recording of this balance or transaction. However, if there's any of these factors, complexity, subjectivity, susceptibility, change, uncertainty, or there's risk at the financial statement level that affects or could affect this balance or class of transaction, our inherent risk goes up. So when you are reading a scenario and they start to discuss a specific class of transaction or account balance, automatically you starting to think maybe there's risks around this balance or class of transaction. I then need to look for any of these factors. Complex, subject, susceptibility, change, uncertainty, or risks at the financial statement level. And based on those, I can determine if I believe it to be a higher risk or not. The assertions, guys, very important that you are comfortable with them. So, guys, the assertions are what management say to address a specific risk. They say it is complete, and then they're saying they have addressed the risk that it has been left out. So everything that should have been recorded has been recorded. So management give us the assertion to say it's addressed the risk. When we as auditors look at the risk, at 
at the assertion level. We are saying that whatever they're saying about the assertion is that there is an error or it's wrong. So they give us the completeness assertion to say they've recorded everything. When I'm looking at the risk at the assertion level, I say there is a risk that transactions that should have been recorded have not been recorded. When they give us the occurrence assertion, they say that everything recorded did take place. It occurred, it's valid. So we as an auditor say there's a risk that the transactions that were recorded shouldn't have been recorded. When they give us the accuracy assertion, they're saying it's at the correct amount, so we are saying that there's a risk that it's at the incorrect amount, not at the correct amount. Cutoff, they say it's recorded in the correct period, so when we are looking for cutoff risks, we say it's a risk that it's not recorded in the correct period. Classification, they say they've recorded in the correct account. When we're looking at the risk around classification, it's that it's not recorded in the correct account. And presentation and disclosure, that it's not presented or disclosed in the apps correctly. Looking at these, completeness, we believe is a risk that it's understated. Occurrence, a risk that it's overstated. Accuracy can be either under or overstated. Cutoff can be either under or overstated. Classification, under or overstated. Presentation and disclosure, under or overstated. So these guys are just the different ways in which it could be under or overstated. So it's important that you understand that revenue could be wrong by being understated because they could have left revenue transactions out, but also they could have recorded them at a too low an amount. But also they could have classified revenue under rental income, so revenue is understated. So that's why you need to know your assertions, guys, because you need to understand when you see there's a risk that revenue is understated, you can go and tell me how that risk could result in it being understated. Not just that they leave it out, but it could be because the amount is wrong or it's in the wrong period. When we look at our account balance assertions, so these are specific now to account balances, they give us the assertion, it's complete. They've recorded everything. So when we see completeness, we find risks that account balances that should have been recorded have not been recorded. And as a result, the balance is understated. Existence. They say it does exist. We say there's a risk that it doesn't exist and therefore it is overstated. It shouldn't be recorded. It doesn't exist. Accuracy evaluation and allocation. Risk that it is not reflected at the correct value. So that could mean that the balance is overstated or understated. Rights and obligations, they say that they have the rights to assets, so we say there's a risk they don't have the right to assets. Or they don't have the obligation to a liability, and they say they do. Or they have an obligation for a liability, and they say they don't. So over or under. Classification, account balance is not recorded in the correct account. And so... It could be over or under, and same with the presentation and disclosure of that account balance. So we now, when reading through scenarios, need to find information in the question that indicates there could be a risk with the recording of this class of transaction or account balance, and then delve a little bit further into what that risk means. That risk shows me they could overstate it and how by 
recording the wrong amount, so it's accuracy. Or that dress shows me it could be overstated because they record something but it was actually stolen, so it's existence. So I need to be able to pinpoint the specific assertion based on the risk. And once I can do that, I then have to go and assess. Is there inherent risk high or low? And look at those factors to help me decide if it's higher or lower. So guys, now let's go and do a risk at the assertion level question. So I want you to do class example three. You're going to have two minutes reading time and nine minutes writing time.